Welcome back to the next section of traffic training. In this section, we are gonna launch traffic for the first time with the Docker provider. It's gonna be hands-on, so we're gonna do this together. I'm gonna to show you how to do everything, and then the lab you can do at your own pace, self-paced. Now, what are we actually deploying? We're gonna deploy traffic inside a Docker, Docker container using Docker Compose. And the traffic container has a label, which then enables the provider to listen to the Docker API, as we see right here. Now, what that means is when we start a new service, we're gonna start an additional service that is called the Who Am I service. And what this basically does is prints the IP address and host name and all the information about itself to the screen. And when this service actually starts, traffic then grabs this configuration and says, oh, there's a new service running, thank you very much. And it starts routing the traffic that we have here to traffic to the service. So we're taking the entry point, we're going through traffic, we're routing it, and to the backend service, who am I? Now, as we go forward, we can actually review the Docker Compose file, see exactly how the configuration is done, and then we can start understanding how we can start expanding this in future sections. Now, this section is going to cover reviewing the Docker Compose file because we want to actually look at the Compose file, see how we're actually going to launch the traffic container, and we're going to launch the traffic container using the Docker provider. Once we launch the traffic container, we're going to review the deployment by looking at the logs from traffic. And finally, we're gonna be able to see the dashboard that traffic offers. And we can see exactly which services are running, both internal and external. Once we have everything running, we're gonna launch an additional service called the Who Am I container. And again, this is gonna be discovered automatically by traffic. So once it starts, traffic registers it and starts routing traffic to this new service. Now, how are we gonna do this? So in GitHub 56k.cloud forward slash traffic training, it's gonna be the first section, traffic getting started. And in this section, you can actually see starting traffic for the first time. And these are the steps that we'll walk through in the session. And then the next section will be connecting the service. So that's when we're gonna deploy the Who Am I service. And then finally, we're gonna scale the Who Am I service in the next section. So let's go ahead and walk through all the variable, all the possibilities with this section. Again, when you open up the folder 01 traffic getting started, there's gonna be three files inside. The Docker Compose YAML, the traffic overview, which is actually the readme for this section, and the Who Am I YAML. So what are we gonna do is basically, we're gonna re first review the, the Docker Compose file for traffic. And I'm using Visual Studio Code because it's a bit easier to read and it just has a lot of features built in that's easier to work with. Now, I've taken the liberty to actually uh, comment in this Docker Compose file so you understand exactly what's happening in the file. And you can see the version three is used by Docker Compose to tell us what version of Compose to use. Then we define a service. And the next thing, we're gonna define the traffic service. And here, we're gonna actually define what version of the Docker image of traffic we wanna run. And in this particular case, we wanna run traffic version 2.3, the latest available at this time. Next is the command. And this is actually where we're passing labels to traffic to tell it what to do. And the first thing we're gonna do is pass the API and secure equals true. And as you see up here, we, that actually enables the dashboard. So it enables the user interface for traffic. The next thing is minus minus providers dot Docker. And this is actually enabling the provider, believe it or not. I mean, it's uh, fairly straightforward, but then you can see how you can expand. You can pass more labels to it and you, you can add additional functionality to the provider. And finally, I added uh, the log level info because usually the log level is set to error, so you don't see very much. I actually put it to info because it's very interest interesting to see once Docker starts, then traffic uh, starts registering services and what's actually happening with traffic behind the scenes. So that's why I put it in info just for us to be able to see what's happening. 
Next is the ports command, and we're gonna expose port 80 from traffic. So that means port 80 incoming is then mapped to port 80 running on traffic. And the port 8080, this is actually used for the dashboard. So port 8080 is where the dashboard is published. And finally, we're gonna publish a volume. And this is actually mounting the Docker socket that's running to uh, the socket inside the traffic container. And why are we doing this? Because traffic needs to be able to see the API for Docker. And without this command, that means traffic can't see the configuration changes and watch what containers are starting or what events. So this essentially is how traffic is able to see the different configurations going on. Now for this to happen, for this volume uh, to be mounted, this is usually a privileged volume mount. So that means our container starts as a privileged service because it has access to this directory. This is usually like a root directory and we wanna make sure it's secure and that's why we need a little bit elevated access to access this file. Then below we have the who am I service and that's all commented out for the moment. So that that's the overview of the compose file we're using. Again, it's docker minus compose.yaml. And I just pop on over to my command line. And as you see, I am in the traffic training, traffic 01, traffic overview directory. And if we get in here, you can see there's my files. And how do we start traffic? It's quite simple because we're using Docker. So we're just gonna use Docker compose up minus D. Now, when we type this command, it automatically uses a default YAML file here. So it's no problem. And Docker compose up is telling it to start minus D tells it to run in the background. So go ahead and run that. And you can see it's starting, created a traffic uh, network for us, started the traffic container all done. If we then do it again, Docker compose PS, we can then see Okay, it is indeed up and running. We can see which ports are published, port 80, port 8080 for the dashboard. Brilliant. Now let's actually take a look at what's happening here. So Docker compose logs. And if we type the logs, you can now see exactly what's happening within the traffic container when it started. First thing it does, it loads a configuration. It then checks which version is running. Uh, starts enabling the, the provider, you can see. There's the provider for traffic, and then there's a prov So it's actually starting internal providers for internal services as well. You can see there's a traffic provider, there's an aggregator. And finally down here, we can see it's starting the provider Docker. And as you see, it's watching the endpoint var run Docker sock. So that's exactly how traffic is working to understand. As I mentioned previously, the, the provider is just watching this socket running. So any events coming in, any API changes, we're just washing it all the time. And then finally, how often should we refresh, uh, refresh the connection? All right, so we are up and running. And if we do Docker Compose PS once again, just to make sure we are running. All right, we are running. We don't have anything running with the container. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to start an additional service now because uh, we're gonna go to the who am I service and I'm gonna uncomment this section. And in Visual Studio Code, if you just do command control, command K U or Windows K U, you can uncomment quite quickly and you can have everything running. That's one of the tricks with Visual Studio Code. All right, we uncommented it everything. Now we can actually start the who am I service. If we can look, what is the who am I service doing? It is actually just a who am I service. It's using the containus who am I image actually written by uh, containus. And then we're passing a label to this actual container. So you can see traffic, HTTP, routers, who am I, rule equals host. Now we'll explain all this in later chapters, so don't get too concerned. But the most important thing is this section right here is we're actually naming the entry point. So we're giving a host name to the container, who am I .localhost. That means I can go into my browser, I can type this in, and it's gonna actually go from my browser to the container through 
through uh, traffic. So let's go ahead. Now that we made the change, we can do Docker compose up minus D. It's actually gonna reread the compose file and say, oh, we now have a new entry in there and it's actually the who am I. So if we could do Docker compose PS, you can see now we have two services running. We have 8080 for traffic and the other one is the who am I running port 80 here. Okay, so what does that actually mean? Let's pop back over to our browser. And now we're gonna open a new tab. And in this new tab, we're actually gonna query the who am I container. By doing that, we're gonna type who am I dot docker dot local host. And there you go, we're getting response from the docker who am I container through traffic. And as you saw, we all we did was pass some labels to the container and traffic then picked up these labels and was able to re resolve this host name, which then re responds with the result. And you can see the who am I container basically just prints the host name of the container, the IP address of the local host, the host running Docker, uh, the IP address of the container, what server accesses the container from remotely. In this case, it's my local machine. Uh, what happened? So it was a git. The host was who am I .docker .local host and the user agent. So this is very similar to like the logs you see in Apache or Nginx when you see an access to a website. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same request in our, our terminal window over here. And we're going to go curl minus H and we're going to go host, oops, host dot who am I dot docker dot local host 127.0.0.1. Now what this does, it tells your curl command to act like your web browser. So we're passing the host who am I dot docker dot local host and we're passing it back to the local installation of Docker. So then it responds also with the same request as you see here. And this is just a workaround to actually pass host names to your local host. It's as similar as in your browser, except we have to pass the host name when we're doing a curl at the command line. And we're getting the same results. Now, in the next section, we're actually gonna cover scaling the WhoAmI container to two containers then traffic is actually gonna load balance between these two containers automatically. And then we're gonna visualize what's happening in the traffic dashboard. Join me in the next section.